Dance Motion USA is a collaboration between BAM and the State Department to send American dance companies into the developing world. And the idea is basically for people around the world who don't have access to American artists through the field of dance to be able to see and feel the energy of America through this particular art form. Dance Motion USA is American public diplomacy in action. When people hear the word diplomacy, they think of treaties and negotiations. Secretary Clinton's concept, smart power, has introduced a new kind of diplomacy where we use every tool, including contemporary dance, to bring people together. Dance Motion USA is a program to send dance all over the world as cultural ambassadors of the United States. It's an incredible opportunity for um, artists from the states here to travel the world and show a slice of what art is from the states. But it ends up being an exchange. So you go to share work and you get to meet artists and young people, folks of all ages, and see what life is like in other parts of the world. At the State Department, there are many programs about bringing artists abroad, but this specifically was a pilot program for large-scale American modern dance companies. The real opportunity was to really devise the project. We were responding to something that was an idea, and we were given the opportunity to actually create a format, a program strategy, and a way to accomplish this goal of sending American dance companies where the State Department believed that a cultural presence would help people in these regions understand Americans and relate to them in a much more positive and, and unique way. The program obligated the dance company to have the artistic director tour with the company. So I had to rely on my knowledge of those artistic directors who had the ability to be communicators, who also could construct workshops, lecture demonstrations in these global communities because the point of the program is not exclusively presentation, it's process. And it's a like one-to-one -one dancer to student dancer, dancer to young developing dancer, dancer to mature dancer, and certainly the general public. Complementing the central issue is I needed the best American modern dance companies to prove that the pilot program would be a success to the State Department and represent to them that this was an incredible commitment and would do service to the U.S. government. What attracted me to the companies, specifically ODC Dance and Brenda Way, who is the artistic director, is probably one of the smartest women in American modern dance today. And I knew that I had to service Southeast Asia and that I needed a smart choreographer, but also a brilliant formalist. ODC Dance has a very formal structure, discipline to their aesthetic. So it's the marriage of intelligence and artistic quality that you have with Brenda Way and ODC Dance. I started the company when I was teaching at Oberlin College. It's 40 years old this year. And I started it because I thought that the group that I was working with there had something fresh and different to say. I think that that, that early robust experimentation ended up really defining how we developed as a company. I think one of the things that uh, defines ODC as a dance company is a very physical approach to ideas and that as fashions change and things get more and less physical, I would say we've continued to be deeply in the body in our expressive means. We're really an organization about values and um, we want to share them and propose things to people. And I think that the mission of Dance Motion as an international cultural diplomacy effort was very much that, to propose ideas that are uh, American, that are things that we think count. And so I thought there was an alignment there between their wish to uh, communicate with people who may not be familiar with what we think and what we look like and how we are, and our wish to do the same thing.
Ronald K. Brown Evidence is the one choreographer who's working in America today who, as an African American, calls upon the great traditions of Africa but modernizes it. So it's American modernism harnessed to African traditionalism that I knew would be a special quality to bring to Africa. I started the company when I was 19 years old and the idea was that there should be a company that represented the human condition. And so when people came to see evidence, they would see a reflection of themselves. Basically, the idea was that each individual represents their family, their ancestors, and their teachers. And they need to do that with a sense of accountability and responsibility. And so when Joe Melillo from BAM called me and said, we have, we're ready to invite you to participate in this program, it felt like it was totally in line with what the mission of the company was, to actually bring art into the world to serve people. Yeah, and really lift them up. Urban Bushwomen, Jale Zolar, who's the artistic director, they're probably the most athletic, strongest women working in American modern dance today. I've spent a lot of time in South America, and I knew that those communities would be disarmed by the fact that this is a American modern dance company made of all African American women, and displaying this prowess of athleticism and strength that uh, it would wow them, and it did. Urban Bush Women is a dance and performance company that was founded in 1984 to look at the stories of the African Americans and African, and African diaspora from the stories that are undertold or untold and to bring the perspectives to light that uh, are less familiar. The name Urban Bush Women uh, was a name that I came up with because I wanted something other than the Jawale Zoller Dance Company. And it, in trying to find the name, I remembered there was an album by a man named Gary Bartz called Harlem Bush Music. And then there was an album by the Art Ensemble of Chicago called Urban Bush Men. It resonated for me because I grew up in what people call the inner city. It's thick, it's dense, it's creative. Some people think of it as dangerous, um, but it's a very fertile place. Urban Bush Women's work and mission has to do with a framework that we have developed called Entering, Building, and Exiting Community. And within this framework, we see this as something that we do naturally. We go into communities that are similar or different, and we work inside of those communities from a point of view of listening and learning, and not um, with saying, and well, you know, we're the experts, we're from New York, we know what's going on, and you all don't. So our, our, our framework is about a listening. It's about a two-year trajectory from the time that you uh, know that you have the award and that you're going to initiate the program through the selection of the companies, the orientation to the countries, organizing all of the logistical details so that when the companies arrive on the ground, they will be initiating any number of services. There are a series of things that the companies need to accomplish in order to achieve the goals of the programs while they are on the ground in those countries. They entailed process work, workshops, lecture demonstrations, discussions by the artistic directors and choreographers, and culminating in a public performance for the communities that they were visiting. But the point is that it has to work in order to communicate the message and communicate the actual artistic message of the dancing. We devoted about two months to preparing for the tour. We prepared four pieces. We did different programs according to where we were performing. And um, so we had to cast them and we had to double cast each of the pieces because we know with a small company of 10, things can happen. So that we had to be ready to go to our left. Well, we selected a repertory that we had that we um, felt would work for the tour, but we had to take a year to get the company to understand what being on the road uh, in Africa would mean. ODC was invited to uh, go to Southeast Asia, which, um, which is where we went the last time on a State Department tour. But this time we went to Indonesia and Thailand and Burma. The tour, incidentally, uh, lasted for four weeks, so two months of preparation and four weeks on the road. I think we had 22 different workshops and outreach events. 
in six cities. And this was very much focused on how we could connect in a much deeper and more complicated way with the people who lived in each of these cities that we visited. So the days were very, very long and challenging and rewarding, all three. The circumstances of our performing in each of those places was radically different. So we had a, a huge challenge of adaptation. But the dancers were extraordinarily generous. I think that they got so much back from the thrill of the unknown that it was nurturing and feeding them to keep the energy up to carry on this very demanding schedule. ODC uh, had one truly major uh, experience of many. In Rangoon, we had wonderful workshops with a lot of young people and there were, it seems to me, several hip hop companies, which I was surprised. But we had a great performance and uh, two things stand out for me in that. One is the, one of these hip hop dancers, he's a young man who I thought was just fantastic. I would have swept him in to our school in a minute. Came away saying, okay, what was really amazing is that I figured out that girls can do so much more than I thought. And also that partnering possibilities are so much greater than I had imagined. And he said, I'm going to steal everything I can remember, which I always think is a good sign. We had at that performance a scholar from the university there. And so he told people what to look for beforehand because he had seen a videotape. And then afterwards, he had a, he had a response to what we had done. And he said there were um, seven things that stood out for him. Uh, one was the freedom of our costumes. As you may know, in Southeast Asian dance, it's quite layered and heavy, so that they're limited. He thought we had an expansive use of space, that we were very expressive in our faces, and he thought that was remarkable. He thought the women were extremely strong. He thought the partnering was definitely outside their normal realm. And he thought the movement looked like a combination to him of Indian dancing, hip-hop dancing, modern, and ballet. And we had these little dance motion pins, and I think we handed out truly thousands of them. Um, so we expect to go back there in 10 years and see the little dance motion dance companies popping up around the town. On the Dance Motion USA tour, our first stop was in Dakar. Then we went to Tubab Diala, which is in Senegal. We went to South Africa, traveled to Durban, then Grahamstown, and then we went to Lagos, Nigeria. On the road, we got up pretty early and went to either a cultural center where we taught two or three classes and then went to another location. And that was pretty much how, how it went. We were involved in over 30 classes during the 28 days. Yeah, so some days it was, so maybe 50 classes. It was really a, a heavy schedule, but really amazing. When you walk into a room and there's 70, 4 to 11 year olds, the energy is uh, incredible. <laughs> I think we had one day off, a lot of teaching, and maybe five performances, but amazing, amazing experiences. Like every day felt like it was totally different. I was telling um, the folks at the orientation that people would say, oh, do you tap dance? Do you break dance? And I said, no, no, I don't, I don't do those things because they assume that those art forms are what we do. And so then when I show them, they say, oh, yeah, show us what you do. And we show them the opening of this piece from actually Destiny. And so the dance movement, the vocabulary is from Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal. And so they look at the dance and they go, oh, you came all this way to show us dances that we know? And so it's amazing to see them get their question answered like what is contemporary dance? There are so many, so many highlights on the road from the teaching at the cultural centers in the car, working at Jermaine Apogny's incredible compound in the fishing village, going to the embassy 
a cultural affairs person saying, oh, I want to go see Yusu Indoor. And they call and say he would love to meet you. And we go to his club and I sit with him and he says, we've been dying for you to come here. I'm so glad you're here. It's like. The tour lasted one month. We went to Caracas in Venezuela, to Cali and Cartagena in Colombia, and then to Sao Paulo and Brasilia in Brazil. Touring is always difficult and exhilarating. Uh, you're, in a, you're constantly changing places. You're constantly changing how you have to adapt. You're constantly having to deal with language differences and trying to understand uh, what you think you understand. But the exhilarating part is that you're learning new information, you're meeting new people, you're making connections, and you're getting to perform your work for really enthusiastic audiences. I think Urban Bushwoman's work made great connections with people in South America. We were particularly in touch with and did a lot of workshops with the Afro-descendant populations in those countries. And so for me, it was really an exchange. It wasn't just us bringing our work to these countries, but it was really having an opportunity to learn about our mutual yet distinct histories. It was really an exchange of learning and um, of aesthetics. We tell stories in our work, and I think that really connected with people. During the tour, there were so many just amazing things that happened. One was we found out there was a women's percussion group in Brazil that was opening an, their studio. So we went to that and there was a spontaneous street parade that we ended up being part of. And uh, that, was, that was really great. I think when we were in Cartagena, going to the island of Baru and meeting Alvaro Restrepo and seeing the work that he's doing there with children who are living in poverty and how he is bringing uh, the dance work that he does to those children. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. One of the big highlights was really meeting people in particularly um, having contact with the Afro-descendant populations. I think that we know a lot more about Afro-Brazilian culture, but to learn about Afro-Colombian and Afro-Venezuelan culture was really, really exciting. And to see the connections, but again, to see what is different. And that's where the work, Walking with Pearl Africa Diaries, was a bridge because people recognize the movement because the African diaspora still has a footprint that you can recognize in all of the different countries as coming from a source, but has taken on its own identity in each of those countries, cities, and cultures. That was really, really exciting. I think the positive impact of Dance Motion USA and its pilot year was to demonstrate to the local embassies in all of those countries that the cultural exchange between American dance and the dancers within their specific cultural community was a authentic one. The embassy staff in all of the embassies these days are really tuned into connecting to people and that meant a lot to me. I thought that really uh, changed the whole nature of, of the tour for us. There were so many times when local dancers in the countries and our dancers just absolutely connected and bonded. And this is the goal of any kind of cultural diplomacy project is to really have a sincere interaction with people from all over the world from many different places. And so this tour was an extension of learning and listening in South America in two countries that we had not been in. It continued the work that we do and opened up and we met new friends and new alliances. In Indonesia, um, I was working with a, a faculty member who is a Muslim woman and she took ballet class with us and covered. And, um, you know, I think we had really forthright conversations about what does it mean to be a dancer and be covered. You know, I think that I'm not sure they have those kind of conversations and I know I don't. There's something about uh, working with 
dancers who have traveled from a village to take a class and they have no, no resources, right? They're not doing it for, as a profession. They're doing it because they love this thing, right? So there's a kind of discipline uh, and hunger that sometimes we can take for granted. Uh, and so I think that's one thing that some of the dancers did learn, uh, the kind of uh, hunger and kind of appreciation for what we, what we are able to do. For me, every time I'm outside of the country, I learn how distinctive this country is and yet how its history is really tied to this part of this hemisphere. I think Dance Motion USA was a wonderful first step in um, a re reconstituting cultural diplomacy, which I think is absolutely key. The young people who worked with us all across Southeast Asia have a different idea of Americans. They are not going to be persuaded by whatever they might read. They have their own visceral experience, and that always trumps what you read. So I think it's a function of the dance form. It's a very communicative, very opening form to use for cultural diplomacy, and I hope they continue it. We, uh, in this project, are, are representing our country. We are representing the best part of our country, American artists communicating with the rest of the world. And you want that to be done in the best way possible, in the most professional way possible, and in the most exciting way possible. None of this would have been possible, of course, without the support of the State Department, it being uh, their contract and, and idea to initiate this program. But we also had wonderful support from private funders, and I would like to acknowledge Pfizer for its support, particularly of the education programs in all of the countries, and also the Robert Sterling Clark Foundation, which allowed us to translate materials, to extend a dance library, which we created and gave to each one of the posts. These private funders help to provide the resources that would supplement the State Department contract and allow us to even deliver this program at a, at a higher level. 